Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find uh, the directrix as well as the focus for a parabola in conic sections uh, when the vertex is at 0, 0. And uh, you can see that the vertex is at 0, 0. I have the two uh, written equations in, conics, in um, conic section form, where you can see the h and the k represent the vertex. Well, in all of these problems, I'm not subtracting anything from x or, or, x or y inside the parentheses. So therefore, we know that the vertex is going to be at 0, 0. Um, and the main important thing, again, is we want to find the vertex as well as the directrix. Now, again, just real quick, just a quick little review here. If we have a parabola, you know, it could open up, down, left, right. The focus is going to be always where the parabola is going to be opening up into, all right? Um, as well as the directrix is going to be a line that is going to be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. That is the same distance from the vertex right here. So you have the vertex to the focus is equidistant from the vertex to the directrix. Just remember, if that value is positive, it's going to go to the right. If the value p is positive, it's going to open up. Whereas its opposite of p is for the directrix, and opposite of p would be for the directrix over here. But remember, if the value of p is negative, that means then the focus is going to the left, so the parabola would open up to the left. And the focus is going to be down, so that means the parabola is going to be opening down. And that's really important to kind of like understand, because even though I'm going to find the focus and the directrix, I'm also going to sketch the information. Um, I didn't decide not to do a video on graphing, because I basically graph every single time I'm doing conic sections. So I'm just going to kind of give a rough sketch so you can kind of see the orientation as well as of the graph. Now, there's another. So I talked about h and k represent the vertex, and p represents the distance from the p represents the distance from the center to the vertex okay now when doing problems i think the first important thing is to understand should the graph be opening up or down or left or right right is it a vertical uh, opening parabola or is it a left or right so i kind of gave you two examples well how do you know based on these equations if it opens up right or down or up or down or left or right well let's kind of go back to y equals x squared plus uh, 3x minus 2, or y equals you know, x minus 2 squared plus 1. These are two equations that we've dealt with, um, or two quadratic equations we've dealt with. And these produced a parabola as well. But notice, remember, these always produce a parabola that's either up or down. And the, and the key point here is that my variable x is always squared. If I were to expand this, my x would be squared. So what that tells me is whenever x is squared, the graph opens up or down. Whereas if y is squared, the graph is going to open left or right. And when I do these problems, that's the first thing I am going to identify. So here, I see that y is squared. So what I'm just going to do on the side is I'm just going to do a little arrow and say, all right, the graph opens left or right. Because what happens is you start getting into it, and sometimes you'll default back to you know, uh, quadratic equations and always thinking the probability goes up or down. Or you'll just you know, forget to completely. All right, so we know there's no h and k. h and k are going to be 0. So I'm just going to write that in there again so I don't forget. So vertex is at 0, comma 0. Now the next thing is I want to find the focus. Remember, p is the distance from the center to the focus. Well, you can see in these equations, when I have it written in this form, 4p is multiplied by my linear variable y, whereas x squared doesn't have a 4p in front. You could actually rewrite this as well. You could divide the 4p and write it like that. Some textbooks have, have it written like that. But I like to avoid fractions, so I like, to, I like using this equation. Um, so what we can see then is, in reality, I could put a parentheses here and say it looks like that, 4 times x minus 0. But why do we need to write x minus 0 anyways, right? It's just in the same there. But what's important about this, though, is I can see that 4p, I'm sorry, 4, oh yeah, 4p, which is that coefficient, is equal to 4. So now to find p, I'm going to divide by 4. And I say p is equal to 1. Now that's very important, because remember, this graph opens left or right, correct? But since p is positive, that means the graph is going to open up to the right. So I'm just going to erase this right here. So before I write the, um, before I figure it out, I'm just going to do a quick little sketch here. And we know that the vertex is here, and I'm going to label the vertex. The, um, the focus is one unit to the right. So I'll just label that with an f. And then remember, the distance to the directrix is the same value of p, but in the opposite direction. So that's going to be at negative 1. And remember, that's a perpendicular line. So the graph looks something, or I'm sorry, uh, perpendicular to the axis symmetry, so it's going to be a vertical line. So the parabola is going to look something like that, right? Well, so now to label everything, we have the vertex is 0, 0. 
focus is this point, which you can see is at 1 comma 0. And the directrix is a vertical line at negative 1. So that's going to be written as x equals negative 1. All right, into the next example. Again, we, um, we have a vertex at 0, 0. However, we see x is squared. So the graph is going to either open up or down. And I'll write vertex is at 0, comma 0. Now, the next thing, again, is we want to find that 4p. Well, remember that 4p is being, what's being multiplied by your linear variable. In this case, my linear variable is y, whereas this one, it was, uh, it was x. So therefore, though, to find that, I'm just going to take black here again. So I'll do 4p is equal to negative 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4, p equals negative 2. So the graph opens up or down. But since p is negative, that means my focus is going below my vertex. So if my focus is below my vertex, that means my parabola has to open down. So I'm going to erase this. And then I'm just going to do a nice little sketch here. So here's my vertex. p is negative 2 units down. So that's my focus. And that means my directrix is going to be two units up. And remember, my directrix is always perpendicular to my axis of symmetry. OK? So now, to figure out these values, I have my vertex. My focus is going to be at this point, which is 0, comma, negative 2. And my directrix is going to be a line, but it's a horizontal line. So that is y equals 2. OK? Um, into the next one, I have a y squared again. So I know this is either going to be opening to the right or to the left. I know that my vertex, um, again, is at 0, 0. But this one sometimes gets students confused because it's not like in the format of the first two. So what we can quickly and easily do is just subtract a 6x on both sides. And we have y squared equals negative 6x. That's supposed to be like that. Yeah, OK. So, Okay, so now we have y equals a negative 6x. Fine. Um, again, my 4p is equal to that coefficient of my linear term. So I'm going to have 4p is equal to negative 6. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. Reduce my fractions. p equals negative 3 halves. It's a fraction, but that's OK. Now remember, y is squared, so the graph either opens up to right or left. But since p is negative, that means the graph is going to be opening up to the left. So I have my vertex here. I'm going to go negative 3 halves. Well, you should know that that is going to be between negative 1 and negative 2. So there's my focus. My directrix is going to be perpendicular since the graph opens up to the left. So I can just write focus is at negative 3 halves, comma 0. And my directrix, which is vertical, is x equals positive 3 halves. OK? All right, so I'm going to try to work through these um, a little bit quicker just to make sure because I see, hello, eh, eight minutes. OK, so let's go through this a little bit quicker. All right, in this next example, again, what we want to do is rewrite it into the format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 4y. And I'm going to have an 8x squared equals 4y. Now, the difference with this one is now we have a coefficient in front of the x squared as well as the term squared as well as the linear term. Well, you can notice in our general equation that I'm using, we don't have any number in here, right? We only want this 4p is what we're concerned about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 8, and I'll get x squared equals 1 half y. All right. So now what I can do is figure out, again, everything else. Again, my x squared is going to be uh, x squared. So therefore, the graph is going to be either opening to the left or to the right. I know my vertex is at 0, 0. And so I'll write vertex is at 0, comma 0. We know that 4p is equal to 1 half. So I divide by 4, divide by 4. p divided by 4 is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So 1 half, the reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth. So 1 half times 1 fourth is equal to 1 eighth. So p equals 1 eighth. P is positive. So what am I talking about? x squared should be opening left or right. It should be opening up or down, right? So the graph either opens up or opens down. Since p is positive, I know that my graph is going to be opening up. So again, a lot of times it's just helpful just to plot the information. So here's my vertex. 
P is 1 8th, which is less than 1, so that's really, really close. So that's going to be my focus. And then my directrix is going to be perpendicular to that, because the graph has to open up always towards the focus. Again, the graph always opens up towards the focus. You can see in all my examples, the graph always opens up towards the focus. So if my vertex is at 0, 0, my focus is at that coordinate point, which is 0, 1 8. And my directrix is at y equals negative 1 8. Okay. Uh, let's go into the next one. Uh, now, this next example, again, looks like it, but you can see like the x squared's on the right-hand side, whereas these two, the x squared or the squared term was on the left-hand side. So the easiest thing to do is just to swap, switch that around so it just looks like the other equation. So let's just rewrite that as negative 1 8 x squared equals y. Now, and again, in this case, you can see that, oh, my x squared is negative 1 8. Well, I don't want a coefficient in front of my x squared terms. I want that in front of my linear term. So I have to get rid, actually, I should write this below. So I have to get rid of that negative 1 8. So to do that, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. And I'm going to multiply by negative 8 because I want, my, I want this to be positive. Okay, so that multiplies to 1, and I'm left with x squared equals negative 8y. Now again, I know that x is squared, so the graph either opens up or the graph opens down. Um, I know my vertex is at 0, 0. I know that 4p is equal to negative 8, divide by 4, divide by 4. p is equal to negative 2. So since the graph either is up and down, but p is negative, that means my graph is going to be going down two units. So here's my vertex at 0, 0, because there's no h and k. p is down 2. That's my new focus. That means my directrix, oh, that's like the exact same equation just written up there. Yeah, cool. That's going to be up 2. So p is equal to negative 2. So my focus is that coordinate point, 0, negative 2, and my directrix is y equals 2. Okay, And the graph would be opening down. All right, last equation. Um, again, in this one, we can just go and rewrite. Fortunately, we don't have to do any of that work, though. So I'd have y squared equals uh, x. I can just rewrite it. And now again, in this case, this one gets students confused a lot because there's no number in front of my linear term. Well, remember, if there's no number in front of your linear term, then it's 1. Because you can always write a 1 times x. So uh, we know my vertex is at 0, 0. We can go and sketch that. I know that 4p is now equal to 1. So I divide by 4, divide by 4, p equals 1 fourth. Well, y is squared. I should have done this first. That means I know the graph either is opens up to the right or to the left. Since p is positive, that means my graph is going to be opening up to the right. And it's going to go to the right 1 fourth. Well, if here's 1, then 1 fourth is right here. And negative 1 fourth would be right there. But again, remember the graph opens up to the right. That's my vertex. That's my focus. So my directrix is going to be a vertical line. So the focus is that coordinate point, which is 1 fourth over 0. And my directrix is a vertical line. So that's going to be x equals negative 1 fourth. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write the, uh, write the focus and the directrix when given a parabola in conic section form with the vertex at 0, 0. Thanks. <laughs>